Hey, how's going everyone? I'd like to extend a special thanks to Amelia Studio for sharing this video. In this series of tutorial, we will be recreating this artwork from scratch. Let's get started. Select everything and delete. Create a new plane and change its size to 50 meters by 50 meters on the X and Y axis. Then we enter the edit mode, select these two edges and extrude up on the Z axis. Bevel these three edges and increase the segment to around 20 by screwing the mouse wheel up. Then we create another plane and change the size to 5 meters by 5 meters. Enter edit mode, select these two edges and extrude up on the z-axis for 3.5 meters. Back to edit mode, select these three faces and extrude faces along normals. While extruding, you can hold the shift key for fine adjustment. Now, let's check the face orientation for the object. If it's blue, that means they are correct. Press shift A to bring up the menu and create a point light. And then we can put it here for now. Go to the light setting and set light power to 2000 watts and also adjust the radius to 0.2. Press Shift A again and create a camera and also adjust its position. Go to the output menu and set the resolution to 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels. Now we can go to the view menu Navigation, Walk Navigation to adjust the camera position again. Go to the camera setting, set the camera type to also graphic, and center our object in the viewport. Now we can use our main object to make the floor. Enter animal, select this face and duplicate it. Extrude up a little bit and make a separate object. We can rename all the object to make the collection more organized and more clear. Now we have a base structure created. Let's continue. Next, we are going to create the neon sign. Press Shift A to bring up the menu and create a new text object. Enter edit mode, change the text to the neon sign text. Change the text layout to vertical, since the neon sign we are going to create is vertical. Rotate, move, and shrink the object, and place to its position. This will be the reference object for the real neon sign object we are going to create. Now, we need to create a single vertex. There are different ways to create it. We're just going to create a plane and add it. Merge all the vertices to one vertex. Move this vertex to a starting point. Start tracing these letters by keep extruding this vertex. Depending on the different font, we might need to create separate parts for each letter. We can do this by duplicate the vertex and move it to the next position and start extruding again. Let's repeat these steps until all letters are created. Then, we create a neon light frame for the letters. If you prefer, you don't even need a reference object to create these letters. You can just create them freely in any font or in any style to make it more interesting. Now, all the letters are done. Let's create a frame around these letters. Since we've been tracing these letters and creating the frame in edit mode from the very beginning, once they are all done, the neon light letters and the frame will be within one object.
Finally, the neon sign tracing is done. We can select the reference object and delete it. Select all the corner vertices on the frame, bevel them to make round corners. Now, select one or two vertices from the frame and each separated part from all the letters. It's to back on the X axis to make the part that connect to the back panel. Select and bevel all the turning vertices to make the wrong corners. Now, go back to the object mode, convert this object to curve, then go to curve geometry setting, adjust the depth to give the neon a thickness, and also adjust the resolution to make it smooth. After that, go back to the object mode, we convert this object back to mesh, then we can give this object a subdivision surface modifier to make it more smooth. Okay, the neon sign object is done. Let's move it to the back wall. Now, we are going to create the garage door and the garage door frame. For precise location, we are going to use one edge from the floor object. Enter the edit mode, select this edge, duplicate and then make a separate object. Extrude this edge up on the z-axis. Then select two side edges and a scale on the x-axis. Let's move this object out a little bit. Create loop cuts to make the frame. The center part is a door. Let's make it a separated object. Select the door frame object. Enter the edit mode. Extrude it on the Y axis. Then we go back to the object mode. We check the face orientation for this object, see if the color is blue. It looks good. Let's move it to the wall. Now, we select the door object, enter edit mode, and create three horizontal loop cuts to make it into four parts. Delete the top three parts, Select the bottom one, then select the top and the bottom edges, extrude them on the Y axis. Scale the object in object mode, then back to edit mode, bevel these two edges. Once done, let's give this object an array modifier and then let it repeat for four times. Now, we have the garage door. Let's move it into the door frame. Next thing we're going to make is a wall electric box and some electric wire conduit. Let's press Shift A and bring up the menu. Create a new cube and a scale until the size is about right. Scale the cube in the object mode and then go to edit mode, select the front face and the inset. 
bevel these four edges and then use extrude faces along normals to create a door on the electric box. Apply a bevel modifier on this box to make it more smooth. Create a new plane, rotate it, enter edit mode, and then delete one of the vertical edge. Move these two vertices back, and set origin to geometry in object mode, and then move it to the wall. After scale the object, let's bevel these two vertices to make the wrong corner. Then, let's convert this object to curve and use the curve geometry setting give it a thickness. This is the same technique we used to create the neon sign object. Now, when electric wire conduits down, let's move it to the wall and give it a array modifier and let it repeat for three times. Adjust the factor number to make the space in between each unit until it looks right. Now, one set of the electric box and the wire conduits done, let's select them and duplicate to make another set or another wall. Also, adjust the box size and the conduit length to make them a little bit different with each other. And that's a wrap for part one of our tutorial series. I hope you found this helpful and are excited to dive deeper in the upcoming videos. In the next part, we will explore more object modeling. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.